Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'm going to teach you how to draw this glowing jack-o'-lantern in Procreate. This tutorial will give you lots of practice working in Procreate. You'll be working a ton with layers using alpha lock and clipping masks, use the distort and warp transformation modes, you'll use blend modes to create shading, texture, and cool lighting effects, and more. And the best part is that there's lots of room to be creative. Carve whatever you want into your jack-o'-lantern. For this tutorial, I'll be using brushes from my Wash and Dry Watercolor Toolkit. The brushes in this set have some cool lightning and darkening effects, and they make it really easy to make unique textures. If you're new to Procreate, I recommend watching my Procreate for Beginners tutorial to get you familiar with the basics. And if you want to take your learning to the next level, you should join Art Makers Club. Art Makers Club is a joy-filled creative community and learning hub for digital art makers. As a member, you'll get access to a growing library of in-depth courses, live virtual events and tutorials, free Procreate brushes, and more. Plus, you'll be joining a supportive and uplifting community of learning artists. You can watch this video ad-free. You'll get the color palette as well as the Procreate file to dig into. Plus, you'll get a bonus lesson on how to do this glowing animation. Find out more at artmakersglove.com. Let's get started. Let's create a new canvas. For this piece, my canvas size is going to be 3800 by 2800 pixels. I have a canvas size template saved for that size, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up. We'll start by drawing the shape of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna go up to my brushes, and today I'm gonna be using brushes from my Wash and Dry Watercolor Toolkit. This set actually comes with three different sets, the Wash, the Dry, and the Wash and Dry Tools. I'm gonna to start in the Wash and Dry Tools. This set has some shape making brushes as well as some other special effect brushes, but we're gonna be using the Crisp Edge Shaper and my brush size is about 10%. I'm gonna go over to my colors and I'm just gonna choose a nice bright orange and I'll draw the shape of my pumpkin. Keeping it pretty simple, I'm not drawing all those ridges and bumps. And then I'm gonna fill this with color drop. And because this brush has a textured edge, you might get this little problem where there's kind of like a white line around the outside. And we can, we can correct that by using the color drop threshold adjustment. So let me undo that. Use color drop again, but don't lift your pencil off the screen. If you slide to the right, that will adjust the threshold and fill in all those little white spaces. Next, I'll draw the stem. So I'm gonna go up to my layers and I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. I'm gonna tap, hold, and drag that layer underneath the pumpkin layer. Then I'll go to my colors and I'm gonna choose kind of a warm green. And then somewhere in the middle here, not too, not too saturated, not too dark. And then I'll zoom up here and draw sort of a curved rectangle shape and fill it in. Next, we'll work on the background starting with a wooden floor. So I'm gonna go up to my colors and I'm gonna go over here into kind of the oranges and just choose kind of a light brown color. And then I'm just gonna fill that entire layer with the color. And then for the brushes, I'm gonna go over now into the dry set. And these are a bunch of fun textured dry brushes with some lightening and darkening effects that are gonna make it really easy to add some uh, cool texture to make this kind of look like wood. So I'll start with the gentle grain brushes and I have one called dark. So this is gentle grain dark. And so how the dark ones work is as you layer strokes, it gets darker and darker and darker. And then of course there's a light version which lightens and lightens and lightens the more you layer strokes on. You'll get to kind of see how that works. So I'm gonna start with gentle grain dark and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I'm gonna create a wood texture over the entire background and keep everything vertical. You'll see why in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over and try to keep these strokes pretty vertical and you can see anywhere that you overlap strokes, it'll get darker because like I said, the more you layer these strokes, they'll get darker and darker like that. And now maybe I'll switch over to the light brush so you can see what that does. And that makes lighter strokes. And that's that's a little bit too light. So I'm actually going to adjust the color. So the darker I make the color, the less intense it will lighten. So if I go over here to like a darker brown, you can see that it has less of a lightening effect. Zoom out a little bit more. So this is just to add some variation to the texture of the background. 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and choose a different brush. Uh, I'm gonna choose the Broom Bristles brush and I'll start with Broom Bristles Dark. And with the dark brushes, the darker you have the color, the more intense the darkening effect is. So if you didn't want to darken so fast, you could make your color a little bit lighter. So now I'm just kind of adding some strokes like that. And I can come in with that Groom Bristles light brush and kind of see, maybe I'll make the color a little bit darker. Yeah, we don't need to do a lot here. I think that looks pretty good. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna add some lines to kind of make planks, like planks of wood on a floor. So I'm gonna go over to my brushes and for this, I'll just choose the whisker brush. I have a brush called Whisker Dark, which has a darkening effect, so that's gonna be perfect for this. And I've already got a fairly dark color. Maybe I'll go a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna draw some lines vertically down like this. Try to keep them fairly the same you know, width space from each other, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then once you've done that, we're gonna add some lines horizontally. And you just kinda of wanna do them every so often. You can add one or two per like a uh, vertical section. And it kinda of helps actually to turn off the pumpkin layer so you can see what you're doing. So I just turned off the little checkbox. And I don't like to make them too uniform. So I'll maybe put one way up there, maybe one down there, and maybe one right here. Okay. And once you've added enough lines to make it seem like planks, we can go ahead and turn the pumpkin layer back on. So I'm gonna go up to my layers and just um, check this box again. And now we're going to actually transform this kind of like wood plank texture to make it look like a floor in perspective. So to do that, we're gonna go up to, we wanna make sure that we're, we have the wood layer selected and we're gonna go up to the transform tool here, the little arrow. And then we're gonna switch over to the distort mode. And this is gonna let you do kind of like perspective adjustments of your selection. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab the center top node and just kind of put that where we want our uh, horizon line to be, kind of like the back of our background. So I'm gonna do that. And then this helps if I zoom out a little bit more. We're gonna take these bottom corners and just drag them out like this. Just drag them out to the side. And that will give kind of a, a perspective effect. And you can adjust this more if you want. I think that looks pretty good. Once you're done, you can tap that little arrow again to get out. I'm gonna come back and add some shading to the floor, but first I'm just gonna do the uh, upper part of the background. So let's go up to our layers. I'm gonna tap the plus sign. I'm gonna move this layer be behind or underneath the wood floor layer. So now it's on the bottom. And for the background, I'm gonna switch over to our wash brushes. So the last set that you haven't seen yet is the wash set. And this has some uh, like watercolor wash textures and some other kind of watercolor paint brushes. And these brushes are designed to be layered. They look best when you layer on stroke upon stroke, you get these really cool color variations. So you'll kind of start to see that. Um, and they also have a darkening effect the more that you layer them. So stone wash is the brush that I'm gonna use. And then for my color, I'm gonna go into the blues and choose kind of like, not completely dark, but a pre pretty dark blue. And then I'll just kind of zoom in there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down like a first layer over everything like that. And then I go over and do it again. And again, I'm building up to the color that I want. And you don't have to fill it in completely, like I can kind of just add strokes here or there, darkening and darkening, just to kind of keep some variations and keep it interesting. You can change the hue, you can also change like the saturation and darkness level to kind of layer on more colors. The darker you make the color, of course, the faster it will darken, just kind of like with those other darkening brushes. So I think that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna use that same brush to add some shadows to the floor. So I'm gonna switch back to the layer with the wood texture. And now I'm gonna enable alpha lock. And with alpha lock turned on, I can only draw within the shape I've already drawn. So I can't draw beyond where this kind of wood texture is. 
So I'm going to take two fingers and swipe to the right and you'll see a checkerboard pattern. That means alpha lock is on. And now I'm going to switch to kind of a dark brown and I'm just going to come in and start layering strokes kind of in this general area. I want to leave this area a little lighter. So I'm just kind of going in and layering strokes until it gets pretty dark. I'm going to do like one stroke over the front like that and then just kind of darken that all. So now it's time to work on the pumpkin. I'm going to be using a clipping mask and a blend mode to add the texture to the pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my layers. I'm going to tap the plus sign to create a new layer right above the pumpkin. I'm going to tap this new layer and I'm going to tap clipping mask. And now that I have this clipping mask on, whatever I draw in this new layer will only be, it will only show up if it's within this shape of the pumpkin, which is the layer right below it. It's kind of like alpha lock, but on a separate layer. The other thing I'm going to do is use a blend mode. So to do that, I'm going to go to this little N and there's a list of blend modes here. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way to the top and choose multiply. And blend modes just dictate how the contents of one layer interacts with the layers below it. Multiply has a darkening effect. So you'll kind of see how that looks once we start drawing. And then for my brushes, I'm going to go back over to the dry brushes. So Bardo dry and I'm going to start with that. Um, gentle grain brush. I'm going to start with gentle grain dark. And then finally, I'm just going to use my eyedropper tool to select this same orange. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw our texture vertically, and then we're going to use the warp tool to kind of make it shape around the pumpkin. So keep everything vertical for now. And I'm just going to layer some strokes up and down like this. Make sure they're bigger than your pumpkin kind of because we're going to warp them. So we want a little extra space. And as you can see, as I layer more strokes on top of each other, it gets darker and darker. It's kind of getting a little too dark and a little too saturated. So I'm going to go over to my light brush and kind of layer on some light strokes. Maybe go a little bit bigger with my brush size. I think I had a, the brush size all the way up. And now I might want to add in um, some darker tones to this. So I'm actually right now I'm pretty saturated on my color. So I'm just going to go and desaturate it just a little bit and go a little darker like that. And then I'm going to switch back to my dark brush because I want to. There we go. I think that's good. The the darker, you know, like I said, the darker your color, the dark, <laughs> darker it'll be. So kind of, you know, adjust your color accordingly. If I do it with light pressure, I get a lot of that like fun texture on the brush. So kind of play around, experiment with color and value and layer on some strokes like that. And once you're happy with the texture, we're going to use the transform tool to make this more of like look like a pumpkin and not like a weird flat thing. <laughs> so we're going to go up to the transform tool, which is this little arrow there. And we're going to switch over to the warp tool now and you'll see a grid appear and we can drag anywhere in this grid to kind of like warp uh, this selection. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So for this one, I'm going to start by dragging the center out on both sides. There we go. So dragging it out and you can see it's starting to warp and bend. And then I'm going to drag the bottom middle up a little bit and the same here at the top. OK, so we're starting to get like a Batman shape <laughs> and then we're going to take these little nodes in the corners and just drag them towards the center. They can cross each other a little bit. I'll do that up here. Like that. So now we've got the texture kind of curving around and you can continue to push and pull around here to kind of get it to look like you want it to. But I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the arrow again to get out. All right, we've got our pumpkin textured. We're going to go ahead and add some texture to the stem. So I'm going to tap over to the stem layer. And for this, I'm just going to use alpha lock and I'm just going to draw the shape that I want to with my texture. So I'm going to use two fingers, swipe to the right to turn on alpha lock. I'm just going to start by selecting this as my color, this green. And I usually when I'm using these lightning and darkening brushes, I'll usually start with the base color and then kind of adjust from there. So I'm going to go to my brushes. I'll just stick with gentle grain. Uh, I'll stick with that brush and let's just see how that looks. 
That looks pretty good, but I'm gonna go smaller with my brush. I'm at like 30% now. There we go. And then I kind of want to warm it up a little bit too. So I'm actually gonna change the hue and go a little less dark. And that will kind of bring in some warmer tones without making it terribly, making it darker. I'm gonna make one side of this a bit darker than the other. We haven't started any shading, which is, I'm actually starting to do that now. So I'm just kind of darkening one side of the stem. My lighting is gonna be coming in from this way, from the right, so it makes sense that it's darker on this side. So I've added a little shading to the stem, and now I'm gonna add some shading to the pumpkin. So I'm gonna go back to actually this base pumpkin layer, the one that's just like a solid color, and I'm gonna actually shade that. Uh, since this texture is set to multiply blend mode, it's gonna interact so I can, I'll can i be able to see that shading. So you'll see in a second. I'm gonna go back to my wash brushes and I'm gonna go back to the stone wash brush. And I'm just gonna choose, um, I'm just gonna choose kind of like right here in the middle. I'm, I'm in orange and then just right here in the middle. Got my brush size all the way up. The other thing I wanna make sure I do is turn on alpha lock. So I'm gonna swipe with two fingers, turn on alpha lock on that layer. And now, as you can see, I can start to just layer on some strokes and darken this pumpkin up on one side. Again, I remember I said the lighting's coming from this way, so I want this side to be darker. And because this is like a pumpkin at night with a glowing jack-o'-lantern, it's gonna be pretty dark. So, you know, for the most part, the pumpkin's gonna be dark but I want this side to have a little bit of light to it. So that looks pretty good. Round shapes also sometimes have some reflected light coming back up that way. So if it's a little lighter on that side, that actually helps uh, make it a little more realistic. And then I also noticed I need a little shadow right under the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna tap back to the layer with the ground, make my brush size a little smaller and just add a little shadow right underneath the pumpkin because that's gonna help it feel grounded like it's actually sitting on something. So I'm just layering a bunch of strokes like that. Now it's time to carve our pumpkin. I'm gonna go up to my layers, I'm gonna create a new layer for this. So I'm gonna tap the topmost layer and then I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a layer above all the other layers. I'm gonna go over to my colors and I'm gonna choose a nice bright yellow. And then I'm gonna to go to my brushes and I am gonna switch back to my wash and dry tools to that crisp edge shaper brush. So crisp edge shaper to draw our carving. And you can put whatever design you want on your pumpkin. I'm just gonna do a classic jack-o'-lantern face. So I'm gonna draw some triangles and I'm actually making them a little bit bigger than I need them to be because I am going to be refining these shapes using the eraser tool. As you can see, it's you get kind of these rounded corners when you try and draw with a round brush like this. So if I use the eraser tool, which is already still set to my crisp edge shaper brush, I can just erase away to create these nice sharp corners. And it doesn't have to be perfect because if you imagine you're carving a pumpkin, it looks a little wonky. <laughs> it's just the nature of it. So there we go. Got my little eyes. Now I'll do another triangle for the nose. Use my eraser to refine it. And then for the mouth, I'll draw like a smile. Then a little bit down here, like a crescent shape. And then I will use my eraser to refine that. And then for the teeth, I'm just gonna go ahead and erase a little bit there. I'm making these a little longer than I want them to be because I'm gonna use my brush to refine these shapes. We're kind of doing the opposite of what we did before. So I'll go back to my brush now and kind of paint the edges in like that. And there we have our jack-o'-lantern face. And if you want to make any adjustments or rearrange anything, you can go up to the transform tool. Make sure you switch back over to uniform, not on warp, because now we're moving things around. 
And I can recenter this. I can maybe make it a little bit bigger. I might just select part of it. Like I'll draw a selection around here. There we go. That's better. Okay. Once you're happy with your pumpkin carving design, we're going to start adding some dimension and lighting effects. So now we're going to add kind of the um, the like sides inside of the pumpkin like you would see. If you look at a picture of a jack-o'-lantern, you might see this kind of like orange pieces around the inside of the carving, and that's just the edge of the pumpkin. So we're going to add that next. I'm going to go up to my layers, and you could do a clipping mask to do this, but we're actually not going to do that, and there's a reason why, and that's because we're going to have our glow effect in between this um, kind of these yellow shapes and the, uh, I don't know, carving <laughs> the pumpkin dimension layer. So if you know you can't use a clipping mask, but you know you wanna use this shape to dictate the thing of you, that you wanna draw, you can use a layer mask. So I'm gonna tap this layer. I'm gonna actually select the contents of this layer. So I'm gonna to select. You just wanna make sure you don't have color fill turned on or this won't work. So just make sure color fill, color fill is not turned on. I'm gonna go up to my layers now. I'm gonna create a new layer. And then I'm gonna tap this new layer and I'm gonna choose mask. And you'll see I have a mask created in the shape of what's on this layer because that's what my selection was. And now whatever I draw in this artwork layer here, will only show if it's within the shape of this mask. Like everything that's black on here is basically hiding what's on that layer and it will show what's in white. That's how layer masks work. <laughs> I have a video about how to use masks. I'll put a link to that for you guys. Okay, so tap into this layer seven or whatever it's called for you, the one that's under the layer mask. Go ahead and deselect by tapping the selection tool. And now I'm gonna choose an orange, kind of a yellowish orange for this next part. And I wanna make sure I'm still using my crisp edge shaper. And I am just gonna kinda of draw an edge on this diagonal and another one on this diagonal. These will be very thin little edges. If you're ever not sure about how to place these kind of, this is like the carved edge, check out a photo, like check out a photo reference Generally, like the further it is to the side of your pumpkin, the more you'll see this edge. But this one's right in the center, so you don't really see much of it. So I'll draw that. And then for this right here, this also needs a little edge. Um, so for that, I'm just gonna draw, I'm just gonna color that in a little bit and then use my eraser to refine. <laughs> I do that a lot. So I'll go over to my eraser and I'm just gonna just make that a straight edge. And this is actually gonna be in perspective a little bit. So draw kind of like a trapezoid shape on top of that. So maybe you're starting to see now what that represents. And you might see the edges of that here. So yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to this cause it's looking a little, I don't know, flat. So I'm gonna go to this layer I'm actually gonna turn on alpha lock on this layer because I wanted to texturize these orange shapes. So two fingers swipe to the right on that. And then I'll go to my dry brushes. Uh, I'll just use this gentle grain brush. I really like that one. And just add a couple strokes just to kind of add a little texture. Maybe I'll make my brush size a little bigger. Again, if you find that it's starting to get too dark, because you do want it to be not a not a super dark orange, a pretty light orange, you can switch back over to the light brush and layer on a couple light strokes. Maybe make the color a little darker before I do that. There we go. But overall, you want these shapes to be a pretty kind of light orange color. Okay, so we've got our pumpkin carving cut out. We've got a little dimension in there. Let's make it glow. I'm gonna go up to my layers now. I'm gonna go back to this layer with the yellow shapes and I'm going to swipe to the left and choose duplicate. I'm duplicating this layer, so now I have two copies. This one that we just duplicated is going to be our glowing layer. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the blend mode of this layer. 
So we're gonna tap this little end just like we did when we used the multiply blend mode. But this time we're gonna use the add blend mode. And this blend mode has a lightening effect. And it, it, it does this really intense lightening. I really love it for doing glowing effects. So I'm gonna use that add blend mode. And then finally what we wanna do is go up to our adjustments menu, which is a little magic wand. And we're gonna blur this out so it has that nice glow. We're gonna go to Gaussian blur. And then we're just gonna turn up the blur. And as you can see, you kind of can find a sweet spot for how much glow you want. If you go too far, it'll kind of, won't look that great. So I'm at like 21%. And I think that looks pretty good. So now if you go up to your layers, you can turn this on and off and you can see that glow effect. And while we're on this layer, we're gonna add a little bit of warmth and glow um, that's kind of like being put off by the jack-o'-lantern right on top of the ground. So I'm gonna use um, this same orange color that I'm using is just fine for that. I'm gonna go to my wash brushes and switch to that stone wash brush. And since I'm on this layer with the add blend mode, it's gonna have an overall lightning effect. So I'm just gonna add a few strokes of this, kind of a little bit irregularly. There we go. So now if I, you can kind of see that it has that glow on the ground too. And then the final thing I wanna do for this little scene is to add some stars to the background. I think the background needs a little bit of love. So I'm gonna to go to the layer with the this like kind of sky background and I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a layer right above it. And for the stars, I'm actually gonna be using a brush that I showed you how to create in one of my tutorials. This was from my galaxy art tutorial. And so I have this uh, set called stars that we made in that tutorial and this great brush called dot stars. So I'll make sure to give you a link to that tutorial if you wanna make this brush. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that dot stars brush and then I'm just gonna choose white as my color. If I double tap close to white, it will snap to white. It's one of my favorite little procreate trip tricks. I'm at like 27% and I'm just gonna do a pass of stars over the background. If I do lighter pressure, my stars will be a little smaller. So you can add as many stars as you want. I even have this one called shiny stars that we made in the tutorial. And these stars have like little, phew, they have like little points on them. So those are fun too. And there you have a beautiful glowing jack-o'-lantern. I think this is a really fun piece. You can do whatever you want for the carving and get personal with it, get creative, have fun. If you wanna do more with this piece, I'm gonna have an additional lesson about how to animate this over in the Art Makers Club version. So if you want that, I would definitely check out Art Makers Club. I've got some information about that at the end. I can't wait to see what you create, especially what type of carving you put into your pumpkin. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot, and I help people find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. If you enjoyed learning from this video, you'll love being a member of Art Makers Club. We've got a growing library of premium courses, exclusive classes, and expanded in-depth tutorials with extra goodies to help you learn, like procreate files of what we're drawing so you can see how the layers are broken down and get a closer look at what brushes we use, procreate color palettes, additional instructions, and more. You'll get to join in members-only live events every month, such as Ask Me Anything Q&As and live drawing tutorials. In our community clubhouse, you'll get to connect with like-minded learning artists, share your work, ask for feedback, participate in discussions, and so much more. And you'll get instant access to the bonus brushes, a unique set of never-before-seen Bardo Brush Procreate brushes. Come join us in the club. You can learn more at artmakersclub.com. If you're sharing your work to Instagram, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag Bardo Brush. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Thanks and have a great day.